Ever since my video about Tether in June, which is a cryptocurrency company worth $60 billion and growing, I've been trying to do one of two things, to expose them as frauds or prove that they've turned legit. I feel I have to. After all, if you believe something this big might be a fraud, you owe it to people to try to find out for sure. So I've been racking my brain. How do you find out something like this for sure? <laughs> and then I had an idea. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the $10 million studio. I'm your host, CoffeeZilla, the internet detective. So, Tether was investigated by the New York Attorney General Office already, right? We know this, they settled. And as part of this investigation, they had to hand over thousands of documents. But we ultimately only got to see a small report out of all those thousands of pages that they looked at. And I started to wonder, could it be that some of the answers we've been looking for are maybe somewhere in the middle between investigation and the ultimate settlement report that they put out. Maybe those documents hold the key. But of course, you might be saying, well, that sounds great, but that's locked up by the government, right, Stephen? Wrong. <laughs> See, I remembered something called the Freedom of Information Act, which lets you request public government documents. And with some exceptions, usually they have to hand them over if you ask. I actually have used the Freedom of Information Act in the past to investigate a criminology department case at Florida State University, but that's a story for another day. The point is you can get insane amounts of information if you just ask. So I started to suspect, given my history with that, that I could maybe do the same thing with Tether. The investigation by the New York Attorney General was over after all, which should mean that it's in the public record now. So I decided to send a formal request to New York State, the office of the Attorney General. Now it turns out their version of this is a bit different. They call it the Freedom of Information Law request, but it's very similar to FOIA, which I've done before. I shoot off my request, I shot my shot, told them what I wanted, which was basically everything, and then just waited. They told me in a few days that the Office of the Attorney General acknowledges receipt of the above referenced FOIL request. We are performing a diligent search for the records you request. We will notify you of the status of your request on or before July 29th, 2021. This was on June 30th. So I just waited a few weeks and that's when something I didn't expect happened. In summary, they said, nah. Not a chance we're gonna give that stuff to you. But of course, it's in that very professional jargon that they use. Please be advised that records or portions of records that respond to your above reference FOIL request may be exempt from disclosure pursuant to da 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 da, -da provides that an agency may deny access to records or portions thereof that are trade secrets or are submitted to an agency by a commercial enterprise or derived from information obtained from commercial enterprise and which disclosed would cause substantial injury to the competitive position of the subject enterprise. What the hell does that mean? Well, basically they're saying we've got, we're Coca-Cola and the formula is in these documents. But I wanna tell you how full of crap this response is. See, ladies and gentlemen, I was expecting some things to be retracted. After all, when I did this in the past, I got a lot of documents that had retractions. It's not uncommon for there to be sensitive information in documents. And what you do is this. This is actually one of the emails that I FOIA'd. The black redaction is basically preventing private info, sensitive info from leaking, uh, which is, you know, fair play. So imagine my shock when they just say like, yeah, we're not gonna send anything. Well, actually in technical jargon speak, this is what they actually told me. These particular documents will be exempt from disclosure and kept apart from all other records until 15 days after the entitlement to such an exception has been finally determined. <laughs> we will notify you when such an exception has been finally determined. Yeah, they're going to notify me. Right. Uh, that was a month and a half ago, to be clear, that I've been patiently waiting. But something finally broke my perfect patience that I was practicing. And that was when I read this article. Exhibit A, your honor. Tether asks court to block New York Attorney General from releasing documents to not even CoffeeZilla, to Coindesk, ladies and gentlemen. Our Freedom of Information Law request asked for the release of any documents attesting to Tether's reserve composition. Again, some very pertinent information. And in this, we find out that they did the same thing with Coindesk that they did 
with me. Not only that, it turns out it wasn't the attorney general that was being difficult. It was Tether. Apparently, Tether has been submitting court orders in order to block this information from leaking. Quote, Tether and crypto exchange Bitfinex has petitioned the New York Supreme Court to block Coindesk and other organizations from receiving documents detailing the composition of Tether's reserves over the past few years. And yes, that's one of the things that I did ask for. Now, what they basically try to argue here is that releasing these documents would harm Tether's competitive position in the marketplace, ladies and gentlemen. And ostensibly that's because they have this like secret sauce in these documents. But uh, this is total crap, right? The truth is, is that this was a public investigation by the New York Attorney General. It's finished now. That information should be released. I mean, that is the whole point of FOIL or FOIA or whatever you want to call it. It's to find out what the government knows, same principle, so that we can hold them accountable and people like Tether, who they investigate, accountable. Right now, we aren't able to do that. Journalists at Coindesk aren't able to do that. And the question is, why? I mean, what could be so important that you couldn't redact? You have to completely ban any of these documents from getting out there. I'll give you guys my thoughts real quick here. I don't know what they're hiding specifically, but my guess is that they're right that it would hurt them if it's leaked. But it's not because competitors would find out what they've been doing. I think it's because the rest of us would find out what they've been doing. The story's not over. And seeing this report from Coindesk just made me realize that it wasn't just me um, that couldn't get access to these documents. Tether seems to be actively blocking these things from getting to journalists such as the ones at Coindesk. So yeah, it's just completely crazy. I have a feeling that there are gonna be some huge revelations soon because you cannot hide these things forever. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, supporting. Don't forget to pump the stock by subscribing and liking. It's absolutely free. And I will see you guys in the next one.